Welcome to Kalusugan ay Karapatan. We have another exciting episode today, Geriatric Issues and Senility. Our episode today is about the elderly and how they should be given medical care. But did you know that it is difficult to define the elderly age group precisely? Some people do not want to see, do, some people do not want to use the word aged or elderly or senile because they may be derogatory or may connote certain incapacities or physical defects or looks that may be contested by older people themselves. That is why I think the appropriate word is older people, which is sometimes preferred, but is equally imprecise. 60 to 65 is the age often used to describe older people but most people do not need geriatrics expertise in their care until age 70 or 75. Like many people I know, even they are in their 70s or 80s, they still look like glamorous, 40s, or feel like they are teenagers. That is true, Commissioner Lily. You will be happy to note that overall, women live about five years longer than men. And this may be because of genetic, biologic, and environmental factors. Although there have been changes in women's lifestyle, such as increased smoking, increased stress, still, these differences in survival rate over the late 20th century has not changed much. Still, we need to confront the fact of life that aging is inevitable. The functions of our organs will decline, over time and this will be irreversible even in the absence of injury, illness, environmental risks, or poor lifestyle choices such as unhealthy diet, lack of exercise, substance abuse, etc. Aging organs are also more susceptible to injury such as intracranial hemorrhage. We need gerontologists, those who study of aging including biologic, sociologic, and psychologic changes. It is good we have invited resource persons to shed light about gerontology, geriatrics, and other terms related to older persons. Yes, I cannot think of anybody who can make our audience understand better what aging is because she's the director at Institute on Aging, National Institutes of Health, UP Manila. Beside that, She's a professor at the University of the Philippines, president of the Philippine College of Geriatric Medicine, and director at Institute of Health Policy, NIH, UP Manila. It is my pleasure to introduce a good friend of mine, Shelly De La Vega. Shelly. Hello, and thank you for having me here, uh, Chancellor Padilla and Commissioner Lili De Las Liagas. I was the former policy director and the former president of the College of Geriatric Medicine, but still I'm uh, the incumbent director of the Institute on Aging at the NIH, UP Manila. I also have the privilege and honor to introduce somebody who will complement Shelly De La Vega's expertise in aging. She's an adult neurologist and whose subspecialty is memory disorders. She is the head of the Center for Memory and Cognition of the Philippine General Hospital. She's been a doctor since 1998. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Dr. Vida Michelle Anlakan. Thank you, Chancellor Padilla. Hello, uh, Dr. Lili. Let us now ask Dr. Shelley about the mental and physical abilities of older people. What happens to them at the age of 65 or 70, Dr. Shelley? All right, we uh, have what we call physiologic aging and chronologic aging. Now, chronologic aging happens uh, from birth. In fact, aging is something that we all go through no? from the time we are conceived in the womb. Mm -hmm. So aging really happens from womb to tomb, unfortunately. And there are people whom we know are very healthy, as you mentioned earlier, despite their age. So not all 65-year-olds will be frail and weak and have problems with their memory. Many of them will be very active. When we talk about geriatrics and the uh, geriatric age group of 60 and over, we sort of think of them as in three categories. The young old, the middle, and the oldest old. 
So many of the Filipinos are in the young, old category. These are those who are still working, still active, pursuing their careers, and uh, very, very much uh, attuned with what is happening in the world. Uh, these are usually those aged 60 to 70. At age 70 to 80, 85, then they start having chronic degenerative problems manifest as weakness or frailty, which I can explain later on. At the age of 85 and older, we have the more frail older person. These uh, uh, older persons now start to get sick and get hospitalized and really start to get more dependent in uh, their activities of daily living. So they may need a caregiver at this point. But still, like I said, aging is very variable. So we cannot say that all 80-year-olds are this way because I know of patients of mine who still run marathons at the age of 83 and 85. So there are some outliers there in that what we, what we think is a normal curve to describe aging. Is there a way of, um, you know, you, it sounded like a very healthy young old person that you were describing. Are there ways of preparing for this so that we will have healthy aging? So healthy aging is a concern of everyone. No? Like I said, it should start when we are conceived. So to be able to be an, a healthy older person, I think your mother has to be healthy. Because you, when your mother is healthy, the fetus is healthy, you are born healthy. Mm -hmm. And we need the environment and the health system, a good educational system, and possibly um, behavioral, you know, behavioral and uh, personal choices that would allow you to live a healthy life. Mm -hmm. So intrinsically, we have the genes that will sort of determine what illnesses we may have, how long we will live, but genes will only take up about 30% of what determines our aging process. Much of it has to do really with your lifestyle, the environment, and the health system that surrounds a person. How do we prepare and be healthy and active up till we are 85 years old? I think, um, like I said, as a young child, we need to really support maternal and child health. And mm -hmm. uh, as uh, young adults learn certain habits, hopefully we get rid of certain habits that promote uh, early aging and sicknesses such as smoking, uh, extreme alcohol intake, uh, risky behaviors. And uh, if we have a good educational system, a good educational system and uh, health, health uh, system that allows universal health care, for example, then that will more or less assure us that we are in a good trajectory. May I ask? I don't know if I am suffering from early aging. How would I know that I am not? Uh, a lot of people have different parts of their bodies age differently. So we age differently from the, the person next to us, but even parts of our body mm -hmm. can age differently. Mm -hmm. So you may have aging joints. Mm -hmm. no? If you, for example, have been obese most of your life, possibly by the age of 40, you will start experiencing arthritis of your knees and hips. Mm -hmm. So those are early signs of aging per se. Joint mm -hmm. problems, hypertension, elevated cholesterol, uh, poor vision, and maybe eventually later on as we discuss uh, a failing memory, those may be some of the manifestations of, of early aging. But maybe you are concerned about premature aging, right? I still remember <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. So uh, there are signs of premature aging, and like I said, you know, uh, we, you can go to your doctor if you are having all of these aches and pains because uh, arthritis pains are the number one uh, health complaints of older persons. So, and of course, blood pressure, uh, uncontrolled hypertension, high cholesterol. These are all, you know, things that we can manage early. Yeah. But, but, you know, I think inevitably all of us will grow old. Yes. So, uh, the goal is healthy aging. Mm -hmm. But what we fear most is actually if we go into an issue of dementia or senility. Mm -hmm. And I want to turn to Dr. Dr. Anlakan An to explain to us what is dementia and what is senility. 
dementia is when our memories fail mm -hmm. enough to the point that our daily activities are already impaired. If you have problems with day-to-day -day activities like counting, banking, handling your money, keeping track of your medications, um, traveling from place to place or using appliances, then you may already have significant memory problems. No? Versus just getting old, but when we get old, usually our memory is still intact. No? That mm -hmm. is the norm. That is supposed to be the norm. No? It becomes abnormal if there is already an impact on our daily activities. I forgot my key. I placed it in the refrigerator. I am already experiencing dementia. Unfortunately, Commissioner Lily, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond it that. It cannot be just forgetting where we placed our cell phone, our eyeglasses, or our keys. Because I think all of us will fall in that criteria because we are all guilty of occasionally having those problems. Yes. yes. So the defining line is actually functionality. For example, if you are a doctor, you are still able to function very well, mm -hmm. do your clinics, do your rounds. If you're an accountant, you're still able to do all your bookkeeping and accounting. Thanks. And at the end of the day, it's really functionality. Because if you have impairment, then you really need to see a doctor already so that certain diagnostics have to be made. So what's the earliest sign and at what age does it set in? There is no actual age, but there is a usual age. Usual Usually age. Usually it's above 60. Okay. So senior <laughs> citizens, if they are in doubt or if they feel that they have declined from a previous level of functioning, they should already consult. You know? Sometimes we don't want to wait for the time that you can no longer recognize family members or you cannot uh, recognize people or you cannot do your daily activities. You don't wait for that. The moment you feel that you do have a memory problem and there is an impact in your life, you should consult. Because uh, initially, we screen for reversible causes. Okay. There are reversible mm -hmm. causes. Okay. Unfortunately, if the workup is all negative, then that's the only time we say that this is neurodegenerative dementia, mm -hmm. usually of the Alzheimer type, which is the most common. And yeah, so we prepare you and your family to deal with this because this is going to take a long time. What's the reversible checklist? The reversible checklist are usually hypothyroidism. Mm. A lot of people have had thyroid surgery mm. in the past and then they forget mm -hmm. about taking their supplementation mm -hmm. for their thyroid hormone. Mm. And then sometimes they have infections in the brain, HIV, mm. neurosyphilis, they are still common. We, mm -hmm. see, we still see them. We also usually use that to check for vascular risk factors. Heart mm. disease, hypertension, diabetes, hypercholesterolemia. Because the risk factors that give you a heart attack and a stroke are also the risk factors that will give you dementia. Wow. So it pays to control these risk factors. And the most important diagnostic for me is either an MRI or a CT scan of the brain. Because then you see if you have had strokes, if you bumped your head and then you had a subdural hematoma or brain bleeding, if you have tumors or cysts, that can actually affect your memory. So you, you need the neuroimaging so that you are sure of what diagnosis you're dealing with. In the usual Alzheimer case, what we just see is atrophy. Uh, there is shrinkage of the parts of the brain dedicated for memory. Okay, so I have a question, like forgetting names of people you've known in the past, is that an early sign? I mean, I think that's very common, yes, yes but is, is that an early sign of, uh, of I dementia? Also, I also get that question a lot. No, unfortunately, people are different. For example, you meet a lot of people every day, mm -hmm. and then you don't really work with them too long for you to be able to retain their name or their face. And also, you compare yourself to your previous level. Have you always been retentive to names and faces? Because if you have been, you should still be now. Mm. But if you were never a good person to remember names or correlate it with faces, then you have to be more forgiving of yourself now. Especially if you have only limited contact with people, knowing them for a short time, working for, with them for a short time, then you may really forget. That is part of normal aging. If you want to remember, you really have to put effort on it. Okay. So I, I'm hearing, I mean, if I work and invest on healthy aging, can I 
uh, assure myself, my, uh, ourselves that you will have a lower risk for dementia? Yes. Okay. We actually have scoring systems for what are your chances of developing dementia. Recently, there have been a lot of studies on prevention of dementia, highlighting certain um, things that are modifiable as we get older. I think that's good for us in the relatively intact stage so that we don't cross over to the persons with dementia stage. I think we can still prevent a lot of these modifiable risk factors. Every day I talk to people, I remember the names because I try my best to remember names easily. But I have a friend, she cannot remember the person she interviewed. Is it because she has no propensity to remember names or is she experiencing early dementia kaya? We don't know. It has to be a consistent problem and you have to gauge her based on her previous level of functioning. So if she's always been like that, then we have to forgive her now because she's always been <laughs> okay. like that. Yes, some of the tips that we know of can increase your life expectancy or your healthy life expectancy by two years, no? If you do these things, part of which includes um, eating breakfast, you know, having a good breakfast that they say can uh, increase your life expectancy by two years. Uh, sleeping well, of course, without the help of any sleeping, sleeping pill, pill you know, hopefully wine. seven to eight hours a day. Wow. Not smoking, zero okay. smoking, moderate alcohol intake, moderate wine intake or beer or alcohol intake is, is allowable. And in fact, uh, more people live longer if they take a little bit of alcohol at a time. Of course, we do not want to encourage anyone who has never taken alcohol to start uh, drinking uh, beer or wine just to increase their life expectancy. That's not what we recommend. More education. Now keep on studying, learning, learn new things, new skills, meet new people, visit new places, have a goal. Have a goal in life. Know who you are and what you can contribute to society. No? I have a very simple yes. question. Mahilig akong kumain ng gulay, mm -hmm. pero mahilig din akong mag-cigar. Mm -hmm. But because I'm a farmer, address ko na yung healthy lifestyle by being active the whole day. And I eat vegetable. So the risk of having high cholesterol might be lower. Simple Filipino asking you, Doctora, vulnerable ba ako dyan sa disorder na yan? Dahil karamihan ng Ilocano, maabot ng 80, 90, malakas pa rin sila. Pero naninigarilyo, nagsisigar sila. What can you say, Doctora? I think more Ilocanos do not use tobacco. I think it's a misconception that just because you're Ilocano, you, you smoke tobacco. My grandparents from my father's side are Ilocanos. They live to be 90-something, no? But they never smoke. They love to eat bagnet mm -hmm. and, you know, things made from pork and fried, fried pork. But they ate a lot of ampalaya in the peanut bed, no? Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, the benefits of smoking cessation, the benefit is there. Uh, any time you stop, hmm, whether you're a 15-year-old or a 80-year-old. So the risk of, uh, of cancers, chronic uh, obstructive pulmonary disease, heart disease, etc., from smoking is, is quite well known. Mm -hmm. So I would still recommend smoking cessation anytime. You know? And um, many of those who live long ha have actually not, not smoked. Uh, there are epidemiological studies, for example, on blue zones, mm -hmm. areas in the world where people live to be 100 years old. And these people really live uh, active, healthy lifestyles. Mm -hmm. uh, a mixture of vegetables, a little bit of wine, a lot of physical activity. Mm -hmm being part and active in the community or family. So these are some of the main points uh, that uh, contribute to their healthy life expectancy. Because you don't just want to live long, you want to live healthy. Quality of life. Quality. Yes. May I ask, mm -hmm. Doctora, I'm very impressed by the Philippine General Hospital program. Philippine General Hospital is the only hospital giving this program? 
for memory. Yes. As you know, okay. There are a lot of centers mm -hmm. for memory, mostly in private hospitals. Mm -hmm. uh, we government offer, hospital, only PGH? Uh, there are some in some government hospitals. If one wants to consult with you, how do they... Oh, they can just go. They can visit there? Their, yes. Do, do you have a special the arrangement? Day. They need to be referred by physicians? What we is your... Have, we, have, we actually have an email ad. And I, I, I get questions from um, physicians in the province because mm -hmm. I lecture a lot from the north to the south of mm -hmm. the Philippines. And then I get a lot of questions. And most of the patients cannot travel to Manila. So I guide some of the physicians on how to handle their patients or how to even diagnose them. So that is a service that we provide. Is it expensive? No, actually it's a free service. It's a free service. We provide, no? In Philippine General Hospital, we see both um, uh, service patients and private patients. And we even do memory tests and diagnostics to screen them because proper diagnostic mm -hmm. is important. No? You have to have a proper diagnosis for you to be able to give the proper medication. There are many types of dementia. Uh, the usual will be Alzheimer's disease, but there is also dementia because a person had a stroke mm -hmm. or a person had traumatic brain injury from accidents, and mm -hmm. we get that a lot. No? Or sometimes they've had brain surgery mm -hmm. or they have other diseases, other mm -hmm. dementias uh, from Parkinson disease or from Lewy body disease. So the medication varies. So we have to identify the proper type. So how is PGH uh, providing this health education and promotion? How do we advise the public? How do we advise the public? So we only, um, we only activated the center recently. Now we're on the data gathering mm -hmm. stage. We're trying to get uh, all of the patients to be screened, properly screened, and also we do the memory screening. Huh? Uh, we do lay forums, er, lay fora every now and mm -hmm. then, so to disseminate information. We also liaise with uh, Alzheimer's Disease Association of the Philippines, and we have gone to many provinces. Mm -hmm. We have trained um, physicians, nurses, and barangay health workers in recognizing uh, people mm -hmm. with dementia and how they should be able to consult and the treatment is available, symptomatic treatment. The Department of Health has this kind of program too? Um, I am not aware currently if there is any uh, active problem. Uh, Dr. Shelley. The OH has a mental health uh, MH gap. No? They have a um, training system called MH gap that uh, came from the WHO, it's now at the level of the barangay health worker, and they train barangay health workers on mental health issues, which includes dementia, but not to the extent of uh, you know, being able to screen at the level of the community. So I think the work that Dr. Anlakan mentioned, which includes work from her group in PGH, mm -hmm. Alzheimer's Association, uh, also augments uh, this community based uh, awareness and uh, even screening. Also, oh, we have community base? Uh, MH Gap, yes, mm -hmm. is already ongoing. Of course, I'm not a spokesperson from the DOH. I'm from the NIH, but I am able to meet with them on a regular basis for their programs. Uh, what we have recently signed by Secretary Ubial is uh, the guidelines for the implementation of the primary essential health care packages for all life stages mm -hmm. from pregnant to the senior citizens and included in that package which is now an outpatient uh, service delivery package is screening for uh, problems of older persons including screening for memory problems at the community level but of course that needs to be supported by higher level uh, services because if they if we are able to screen a person, for example, in the community who has frailty, beginning dementia, risk of falling, then there has to be someone in the secondary or tertiary levels in the hospital, specialists included, who will be able to uh, diagnose completely and manage these, uh, these patients better. Dr. Shelley, I have a, 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 any, anybody can answer, but I see a lot of old people doing crossword puzzles, you know, when and, uh, and, and I've asked this for my uncles and aunties. They say they, they just want their mind to be, uh, to be working. 
So, and now that Sudoku has come out, mm -hmm. it's also one that's been popular. Do they help? And we also have some computer-based games, right? For Maybe I can ask Dr. Anlakan to uh, shed more light on this. Uh, is it better to do mental exercises mm -hmm. versus physical exercise to prevent dementia? Mm -hmm. or Cognitive stimulation is always good. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest risk factors for dementia is actually a uh, lesser number of years in school. So, number of years yes. in school. so okay. because the thinking is that the more you learn, the more well, you learn. Uh, especially in formal education, and the more you have lifelong learning, like you are open to anything that is new, whether it be crossword puzzle or Sudoku or reading, it builds up what we call cognitive reserve. Mm -hmm. Cognitive reserve are pathways in our brain wherein our neurons connect. It's like a tree that is very shady with all the branches. So this cognitive reserve is something that you build up over the years. And if you have very good cognitive reserve, when you are uh, already in your um, relatively elder age, mm -hmm. then um, it is something you can fall back on. Because if you start having the abnormal protein accumulation of Alzheimer's disease, you can be relatively resilient meaning you may not have dementia because you built up a very good cognitive network earlier on. Mm -hmm. So any lifelong learning is actually advisable. Mm -hmm. It's never too late to learn anything. And I always tell this to my patients, especially those who are afraid of gadgets mm -hmm. and appliances. So I tell them, you should try it. You should give it a try. Always learn. If, if you only have time now to learn the violin or to learn how to sing, then do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but also physical activity is very important, mm -hmm. not just for memory, but also for maintaining healthy aging. Are, are anything that improves blood circulation will also prevent dementia. Okay. Yeah. So we need to keep <coughs> moving. <coughs> physical so, inactivity yeah. is uh, one of the risk factors Do we have a for dementia. To we have, international, we have international statistics as to mm -hmm. what will give us dementia. So if we try to reverse it, if you look at them, then you can prevent dementia. Number one is the number of years of education. So the longer you stay in school, the more protected you are. Mm -hmm. And in midlife, which is around 45 to 65 years old, mm -hmm. there are surprises actually. Avoidance of hypertension or controlling hypertension is a big thing. Aside from that, avoidance of obesity mm -hmm. and hearing loss. So if you try to correct hearing loss in midlife, you may be able to prevent dementia. The theory being that if you are shut off from the rest of the world, then there is no learning. Mm. So your cognitive reserve just declines and declines. In the later life, there are um, more risk factors. Smoking, you will uh, have uh, more dementia because of smoking. Um, depression, um, if you are... Uh, socially isolated, you don't have a lot of network of friends or family, mm -hmm. or if you have diabetes, then yes, um, these are risk factors for dementia. Mm -hmm. But there are also clinical trials that help uh, elucidate the benefit of physical activity, plus an, a multifactorial intervention that was done in Finland, I think it's finger called the study. finger study. Uh, so it was a combination of uh, not just healthy diet but physical exercise mm -hmm. intellectual stimulation they did it in such a way that showed that really all of these factors that uh, dr anlakan mentioned contribute to preventing uh, dementia and improving uh, long longer uh, functional ability when it comes to to memory nih in the u.s also did a study on physical activity that showed the benefit of physical exercise of course uh, there are some studies that showed that it doesn't affect uh, memory at all, but I think uh, physical activity in general will not only improve uh, the circulation of the brain, but also overall health. How is the Philippines compared to other Southeast Asian countries as far as these the figures are concerned? Mm -hmm. uh, I would think that Japan is more developed and uh, they take care of the old senior citizens. I can see the programs, you know, when I was there. And the uh, Chinese people are very hard working. Up to 85, they still carry this sack of uh, corn and they carry it. If you pass by the railroad of China, 
85 years old, they're still physically active. Is sedentary life related to early onset of dementia? Yes. Filipinos are quite mm -hmm. sedentary. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Relatively, yes. Doctor? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, the life expectancy of the Filipino, including the healthy life expectancy of the Filipino, has improved. Mm -hmm. through the years mm -hmm. because when I was still in med school our life expectancy was only about 60 65 wow. now it's 67 and 73 no syempre mm -hmm. mas lugi ng konti ang lalaki no but uh, I think when you look at the global aging index because there is a you know an aging index and whether countries are advanced in helping promote healthy aging I think the Philippines still has a lot to achieve we have very good laws that protect our senior citizens. Mm -hmm. We have a, a very good Philippine plan of action for senior citizens. That includes a uh, 20% discount. Hopefully, there will be some geriatric services and wards in all hospitals. But uh, the implementation of this law still has to be, you know, has to be uh, accomplished well. Uh, the social pension is one of the things that we are rated on mm -hmm. and uh, we just social started pension. giving the social pension of about 500 pesos per month to our very indigent older people. Of course, we want it to be a little bit higher than that and for more people. Uh, rights of older persons, I think in the Philippines in terms of uh, protection from, from elder abuse still has to be improved. No, because we still do not have a big, a, a good, a good organized uh, system for addressing the abused older person. But we are also rated with regards to our life expectancy, mm -hmm. and we we have improved. But compared to other uh, Asian countries, we lag behind uh, Japan. No? We lag behind Singapore. Mm -hmm. We are more or less um, at par with. Uh, other Asian countries like Vietnam and Myanmar. Cambodia. Remember that for middle-income countries such as the Philippines and low-middle-income countries, when we say life expectancy, we really are talking about maternal and child health. Mm -hmm. you know, reduction in maternal and child mortality is mm -hmm. the key to improving life expectancy. If we are very well-developed, such as uh, countries in Europe, Mm. Uh, Singapore and Japan. What determines life expectancy is the services, healthcare systems that are provided to the adults and middle aged, which addresses problems such as hypertension, diabetes, stroke, okay. lifestyle diseases. Yes, yeah. Yeah. chronic you know, degenerative diseases. I like to ask both of you, Chancellor, mm -mm. Doctora, Doctora, we are so much influenced by advertisement in the television and such claim like taking this herbal product will improve our memory you know this this might give a different signal to the Filipino people and they will be encouraged buying this herbal product mm -hmm. to prevent senility for example mm -hmm. especially packaged by and marketed by very prominent people, beautiful actresses, uh, an aging actress in the 60s taking the, taking the herbal products. Can you say something about the effect of this? I'll go first. You go first, yes. yes. I always get that question a lot. Unfortunately, I think it's human nature to look for shortcuts or things that are beyond, within their power. You know, if they think they are vitamin deficient, mm -hmm. so they think that they need a lot of vitamin supplementation. But actually, uh, it's very rare. <laughs> vitamin uh, supplementation may not really be needed, only on certain cases, and for those really diagnosed to have the deficiencies. You know? mm -hmm. um, they don't want to hear about having to exercise mm -hmm. or having to eat more vegetables mm -hmm. than meat or stopping smoking and avoidance of alcohol, um, a large amounts of alcohol. They don't want to hear that. They want shortcuts, pills that they can pop every day to try and prevent. They but feel better. Yes, if, you, yeah. if you look at all the advertisements, mm -hmm. most of them are targeted towards the people who don't have disease at all. 
they are yeah. relatively healthy, mm -hmm. no? So of course they will say I'm not getting sick, but because they're still relatively healthy. You know? But unfortunately, the studies that support these supplements are very small, and you know that's not how we do data analysis yes. in the university, and this is not for policy making. Also, we need stronger evidence than that. What we do have are medications for symptomatic improvement if you already have the dementia. And it is specific to what type of dementia you have. So it's very important that consultation is made. That's enlightening. Were you tempted also to buy some supplements? No. Um, I love to swim. And that's, that's my, good. that's the source of my energy. That's yeah, very good. I love to swim. So we, we hear dementia and senility, okay? So can you just uh, explain it again to the, the viewers? So when you say you're senile, you're, uh, what does that really mean? Oh. Ulyanin. <laughs> is that Ulyanin? Uh, yes, in the Filipino language, it is Ulyanin. Yes. No? So usually we call our elderly people Ulyanin if they are very repetitive yes. or they cannot pronounce your name or they cannot recognize you anymore. <laughs> Unfortunately, we still lag in the awareness level. No? Even some of the doctors that I lecture to in the province, they think that it's normal mm -hmm. for aging people to have memory decline. Mm -hmm. But it is not normal. I often okay. say it is common, but it is not, not normal. normal. No? It okay. is a disease. No? Mm -hmm. So this is memory decline that impairs our daily activities already. Okay, so do we have numbers? Um, do we have statistics to tell us what percentage of our population? Derived statistics. For dementia? Uh, yes, for yes, dementia. Uh, I think we have some based on the Delphi technique. Uh, there was a researcher uh, from the WHO who went around, but mostly specialists, uh, specialist reports of how many they have seen. So these really are uh, selected practitioners. And uh, they say that for the general population, uh, those with uh, dementia am amounts to between two to six percent. Mm -hmm. uh, so, mm -hmm. but we don't have a registry. Among, two to six percent mm -hmm. among the general population. In the general mm -hmm. population. But uh, the the percentage of dementia increases as people age, mm -hmm. uh, and and mm -hmm. Dr. Anlakan can explain that, because uh, that is just a general trend that we talk about. But we don't have a registry uh, of. Uh, persons with dementia. We would like to have a registry mm -hmm. of uh, per persons diagnosed mm -hmm. with dementia, just as I'm sure uh, oncologists would like to have a cancer registry. Mm -hmm. The international data will say that above 65 years old, uh, 65 to 70, we have 5% chance mm -hmm. of getting mm -hmm. dementia. And mm -hmm. above 85 years old, it's approaching 40 to 50%. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, it's very common, yes. but it is not normal. Yeah. So I, sometimes I also see a disparity as to when they consult. The lower socioeconomic levels will consult when they are already having behavioral problems. Mm -hmm. Like the elderly patient would not eat or is very violent or having, not sleeping or not eating. So those are the issues that bring them to the doctor. But the relatively high socioeconomic levels, those with higher education, will come to you when they feel that they already have a memory decline or they're only missing certain things. Mm -hmm. So that early. So uh, the prognosis is always good when they come early because medications work in the early stages. In mm -hmm. the latter stages, unfortunately, we can only give medications for uh, better behavior, better... Sleep. Later meaning... 65 years old and above? No, later stage of the disease, meaning that later they, have stage of the disease. they have to be assisted already in their everyday activities. Mm -hmm. Like okay. uh, somebody has to keep track of their medication, somebody has to remind them okay. to bathe, and sometimes they have to be bathed and mm -hmm. dressed okay. appropriately. Because, uh, of course, this is because of a memory problem. Because sometimes they are frail or they are very weak or they have physical disabilities due to um, arthritis or they shake because of Parkinson's disease mm -hmm. or they have um, hemiplegia, they have paralysis due to stroke. Mm -hmm. But these ones are really purely because of a memory problem. But remember that there is no cure for dementia. Yeah. There is no cure. I want that's not found it's a little bit confusing yes. about this uh, study that was presented in Congress 
claiming a health research by a group of scientists trying to identify the toxin of spiders, you know, to cure dementia. And I was listening intently, and uh, a congressman doctor asked, are you sure there is a cure for dementia? Yeah. That's true. We have not yet found a cure for dementia. Uh, it can only reduce the rate at which a person deteriorates, mm -hmm. but eventually the person will go through all the stages uh, until the person is very dependent on all activities. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing, there is nothing to reverse the condition. The reason we give them medications is we want to, them to be able to hold on to what they can do. Mm -hmm. So if at the moment they can still eat by themselves and bathe themselves and dress themselves, mm -hmm. then they can hold on to that longer with medication. And also the behavior is um, they are more amiable, they are easier to care for if they have medication. But that is only as far as we can give. You know? what, what medication, for example? Oh, we have cholinesterase inhibitors mm -hmm. for memory. So those are donepezil, rivastigmine, and galantamine. Mm -hmm. And we also have NMDA receptor antagonists like memantine. So we have um, certain drugs that we give depends on the patient. There is no single formula. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we have to look at the patient and evaluate a patient individually. And oh. caregiver support is very important because sometimes caregiver. it's the caregiver that <laughs> needs more, more of our help than the patient. What, what I'm getting is um, healthy lifestyle, healthy aging, um, and be active and uh, to be as, you know, to be able to uh, function the long as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we really need more time to discuss uh, the elderly and the aging, but um, I'd like to request our resource speakers now to maybe give a message to our viewers. Each, right. we'll start with Dr. Shelley. So in order to be healthy, be functional throughout your lifespan, do try to take care of yourself eat healthy, be active physically, be involved in community and with your family, and make sure that you have a goal. You know why you are here in this world. Because uh, if you know why you are here and what you can contribute to the world, then you will be able to age gracefully and more, be more healthy for as long as possible. Right. What about Dr. Latar? I think, I think prevention is uh, so much better than cure. No? Uh, we should do everything in our power to try mm -hmm. to prevent dementia via the risk factors and prevention strategies that we discussed earlier. But also, if you think you already have memory decline, you should consult. Whether you are just not sure of yourself or you're doubting it because there might be other reasons why you are having it, mm -hmm. let us evaluate you mm -hmm. and give you a proper diagnosis so you will be guided accordingly. Our discussion is really very interesting and we are glad that our audience is hearing this maybe for the first time but we have to say goodbye for now let us have the final message from our guests okay. one, word. one word one word live healthy okay tora promote lifelong learning we will all face the inevitable in the future it is good that we understand the changes that will occur in our mind and body we should know what to do when we experience geriatric issues and senility. I hope those who will care for the older persons have also benefited from this episode. We hope that the families or households with older persons have listened to our resource persons so that we, so that we can fully understand them and we know how to respond to their needs. I hope you, you have found this episode relevant and mabuhay ang kalusugan ay karapatan.